Okay, I am frequently asked about tube coolers, so I wanted to do an informational video just on tube coolers for people. So this four inch, 10 foot long pipe is a tube cooler. What a tube cooler is, is a heat exchanger. Uh, there's two different types of heat exchangers commonly used, a tube cooler or a plate cooler. I'll see if I can get an image of of a plate cooler and I also want to see if I can get a cross section of a tube cooler so you can see. Now what is a tube cooler used for? Essentially exchanging heat. So when we do larger scale pasteurizers, this is 105 gallon, anything really 105 gallon or larger, you need to add in a heat exchanger to speed the process of cooling the milk after pasteurization. So what we do is we run cold water. There's gonna be a cold water tank somewhere else and we're going to actually bring it in this little threaded line here and then it's going to flood the cooler and then it's gonna come out the top and we're gonna send the product in, in the opposite direction of the milk, and then it will cool the milk down. Now, this could be sent via the piping back to the pasteurizer, as it is almost hooked up right now, or, once we've reached whatever temperature we want, this can be sent then to an additional bulk tank designated for cooling milk. Now, not every setup is like this. This is just particularly how this setup is. Some people just go through their tube cooler back to the pasteurizer and that's it. They don't have this spare bulk tank here for cooling milk. So they'll go back to the pasteurizer until the milk is cool. Then they'll run it directly to their bottler. So in this situation, this, is, this tube cooler is washed right from the vat. We are gonna just fill this up, turn the pump on, and then we're just gonna circulate and then go back into the vat to wash it. In a setup with a micro dairy where they do not have a valve on the bottom, we actually run the lines to the sink and we put the nipple and the pump this is the pump that we use to the sink. So that's how we wash them. So essentially, these do not necessarily give you cooling capacity. What they do is speed up your cooling. So yes, maybe you will use a little bit less cold water to get your milk cool, but you still need to have a cold water resource, be it an old bulk tank of cold water, an ice bank, whatever it is to give you that cold water. You can use tap water in these um, like we would do on the farm side, but um, it just wouldn't be quite as efficient. Now, how quickly do they cool? That's an excellent question that I'm consistently asked from milk inspectors. And to give that answer, I would only be able to do it when there are set parameters. For example, how quickly is the water flow? What gallons per minute, how quick is the milk flow? The rule of thumb is that if the milk water flow is going at twice the milk flow, you're gonna get a 20 degree drop with each tube cooler pass or plate cooler pass. They're very similar in efficiency. Now we use a tube cooler over a plate cooler commonly because it offers you a little bit more surface area to push sediment through. So when you're doing chocolate milk, strawberry milk, a milk with a sediment, you need a little bit more surface area because things like that can gunk up in a plate cooler. Um, it's, it's a highly debated topic I've found in the dairy processing world, uh, plate cooler, tube cooler. We use both frequently, uh, not to say one is better than the other. Um, this is just how we do our systems in here. Um, we also can repair tube coolers easily and plate coolers are a little bit trickier to repair. So we find um, that they're just the way that we gravitate, but um, 
either one works in cooling your milk, they both exchange heat. So they'll speed up the cooling. Um, and not if you have a smaller scale, smaller than 100 gallons, maybe like 30, 45 gallons, you probably don't need a tube cooler. Um, you could just cool within the jacket of the pasteurizer. But um, as you go up larger in size, then you need these heat exchangers. So this is also another way that you can save time. If you grow your plant to expand, you can always add in additional heat exchangers. Those could be stacked. We could have really four there in the space that we have the one. Um, and we could go through all four and go right to the bottler if we wanted to. So this is what they are. Um, it's a heat exchanger, um, tube cooler, plate cooler, um, very similar. They exchange heat. You're bringing hot product through one side and cold water through the other side. And essentially, both of those temperatures are going to become more similar to each other. If you have any more questions, let me know.